Hi guys, welcome to the Kung Fu Report, where we talk about classical Kung Fu and its application. Today we're going to continue with the Five Fists of Xin Yi. We'll be doing the Pao Chuan, which is the Fire Fist, or the Five Element Fist in Xin Yi. See you when we get back. Chris, sir, please come in. I love the Pao Chuan because it is very, very flexible. It can be done in many ways. It can be done for trapping, counter trapping. It can be done as an attack. It can be done for defense. Today, I'm just going to give you a couple of ideas for defense. And it can be done in an outside gate, in the inside gate. For example, it can be done off of the basic monkey wall. Okay? And you can hit a guy like this, right? When you need a fire element, a lot of people argue where the hand should be. In my mind, that's not a correct way to do it. Because the nature of lifting your hand like this, no matter what angle, your rotator cuff is pretty strong here, right? When it gets to about here, it gets pretty weak, and all you got left is really a tricep. So if I were to do the application with Chris and I lift my arm up, all Chris had to do, like, maybe I lift it up a little higher so you can see it, is pull down. There's no way I can hold him up here because all I got is my tricep. So to memorize what a form is is actually not that smart. One of the things you can do is to uproot the guy. So now that Chris pulled down, he can't no matter how hard he tries. Because as soon as he muscles me down, it's actually going right into both my legs. So it's really post-training inverted, right? That's why memorizing the form is not smart. It has to be done with internal mechanics, so you're not using your tricep or your rotator cuff, but it's going right into the legs. The second thing we're uprooting there is this hand doing this, which is from the tiger hand in Xin Yi, also in each one on the ceiling. That's just for teaching purposes. If you uproot the guy, it's a good thing so you can't punch a block for a tenth of a second. But it's actually not smart to make the guy step back because now I'm helping him absorb the punch. So if it's not for demonstration purpose, you should only uproot the guy a little bit, like maybe an inch. That way he's a sitting duck for a second, right? Now you just eat the punch and you go back to splitting and bunch one. Another thing you can do is you can also go on the inside gate. If Chris punches with the other hand, you can come right in, you can go to the throat or the body, into the splitting, and back to the bunch one, right? And bunch one is also flexible for anything round. So if Chris back fists me, anything on this angle, if he goes harder, you can just take the whole, sorry, Chris. You can just take it out. Or in a round shot, you can probably see it better on this angle. Chris comes in hard, comes in harder, it doesn't matter, right? Also, you're seeing there's a lot of seven star stepping which makes it even harder. So I'll go lighter, because this one will hurt. If Chris goes around, if I step into this way, now he gets really uprooted. Because when he swings, if you put that leg forward so you can see it better, his power line's here. All his power is going this way. If you look at the heels as a dot and form a line, that's where all his leverage is, right? So Chris is really strong this way. He's really weak on the third leg here because of the angle. However, when he hits me like that, there's no way in real time I can run over here and hit him here. So to compensate for that in Xin Yi, we have the seven star stepping, which will allow us to step into the empty gate here, and there's no bone alignment here. Because of that, when Chris hit, he had no power. And I make it shorter and shorter so it appears as though I'm not doing that. And lastly, about the power of the fire fits, right? You can see it better this way. Chris went to this one. Where's the power coming from? So, I'll go very light. I'm gonna hit Chris with like maybe 2% power. The same amount of force that Chris pushes my arm, all of a sudden it doubles the power. If Chris swings, there's even more power. The harder he pushes on this hand, the harder this one will hit him. Like biking on a bicycle. The harder you push down on one, naturally the other one bounces up. So, when you're doing the fire fist, the timing is crucial. When Chris pushes, I can absorb it into the ground, push hard like this, right? And then later on I learned how not to go into the ground, but unite it into this hand. So when he quick, it goes right into Chris. You can understand intellectually, but in order to do it, you must get all the connection around your scapula and into the spine. Again, learning post training. So when Chris swings really hard, this hand I was hitting him is really this hand that's hitting him based on him pushing me. Now, if I just squeeze my hand a little bit and start doing this, you'll kick it really fast into this elbow. I'll go very light, Chris, because this one would definitely kind of... Yeah. And I went up in the sternum instead of the diaphragm because we like Chris. Now, to make the matters a little bit different, and I'm glad you can see it better here, 
The power plant, this fist here can also be used in a different way. Now watch this hand for a second. This can, he can use to intercept this way and hit with this one right away. And when I do that, I go slow, it goes right into splitting right away, right from here to falling energy, right? So even on this side, Chris comes in, right from here, the splitting here. If I just pat Chris's hand down, it's here. But if I do it with the splitting, and I'll go like this, boom, it can really take out the root, and then you can go to bunch one. So when you work on the five fists, once you have the connection, you have to go really light for this reason. Let me get back, we'll talk a bit more about this. All right guys, thank you for watching this short demo. If you're actually interested in being able to do it, we have a course in adamchenkungfu.com and the Shingyi series. I'm happy to uh, announce that volume two, the five fists is now officially released on the website. See you there. Second thing is, before I go, I wanna drive this point home because we've been getting a lot of emails about the Shingyi, right? And I want to re-emphasize the idea that some ye hate, right? So some ye, that's the heart mind and the intention mind together basically is the strategy and the tactics. The hey layer is basically the energetics. And then ying, the shape in Xing Yi is basically the movement. So when you train, that's the three paradigm. You want to examine the tactics and the strategy. In my opinion, there's nothing that unique about Xing Yi with that because most of the linear techniques exist in other martial arts style. And then you have the shape of the movement. And what I want to emphasize is if you just memorize the movements, you're not going to get much internal power out of it. To me, the most important part is energetics. And I've been nagging about that for a few episodes now, right? So when you learn the fire posts and the wood and the metal and all that stuff, nothing can compensate for the energetics if you want the relaxed type of power that we've been demonstrating throughout centuries with the Shin Yi, right? So you wanna pay attention to post-training. That is the essence of it. All right, guys, train hard and stay safe. See you in the next episode.